Hello and welcome to day number three of Superbase Launch Week 5. So far this week we've launched a beta version of our admin API, an official v1 of our Superbase CLI, and version 2 of our client library, Superbase JS. If you haven't checked out those videos yet, I recommend the links in the description. Today we're celebrating everything security, enterprise, and compliance, the stuff that protects us and our apps from some pretty bad days. We have a whole bunch of TLAs and FLAs to go through, including SOC2, DPA, ABAC, and SLAs. If you don't know what all those acronyms mean, join Ant, Rory, and Inian now as they take us through them. Hi, I'm Ant. I'm CTO and co-founder at Superbase. Hey, I'm Rory from the growth team at Superbase. Hi, I'm Inian, an engineer in the Superbase team. And we're here today to talk about security at Superbase and some of the new enterprise features that we've been working very hard on for this launch week. So I think we can start with SOC 2. So we can announce today that Superbase is now officially SOC 2 compliant, and we can dig in a little bit to what that means and why it's important. So Inian, I don't know if you want to start by telling us what is SOC 2? Yeah, so SOC 2 is this compliance standard uh, written up by the American Institute of CPAs. Uh, but yeah, SOC 2 defines a set of criteria uh, along different uh, accesses like uh, security, uh, privacy, processing integrity, and so on. And uh, as of uh, a couple of weeks ago, Superbase is SOC 2 Type 1 compliant. And why was it important for Superbase to become SOC 2 compliant? Yeah, so SOC 2 is usually important for like uh, SaaS companies and for Superbase specifically, it was important because we are a database company and we store sensitive customer information. So we take security very seriously. And that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to iron out our processes and become SOC 2 compliant. And SOC 2 specifically deals with how a third party vendor handles sensitive information. And uh, since, as I said, Superbase is a database company, it was important for us to uh, start working on that. Yeah, nice. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the process. Uh, so the first thing which is important is to have a compliance monitoring tool, right? Yep. Uh, it, this has been like a recent change where like a lot of the, uh, tools which help you become SOC 2 compliant uh, mainly along the evidence gathering and submission phase because it takes a lot of effort to gather up evidence to show your auditors that you're doing everything that is required for SOC 2. So we used uh, a tool called Vanta to monitor uh, our cloud environment, our task management software, our identity provider uh, to collect evidence and uh, show to the auditor that we are indeed SOC 2 compliant. So having a tool like this streamlines the entire process. And it's it's kind of a company-wide activity, right? Like we've seen it's it's touching a bunch of different departments in the company. Exactly. Your SOC 2 is not just an engineering only thing or a legal only thing, right? So it affects everything from like how employees are, how we interview employees, uh, how we onboard employees, uh, the processes of uh, how you request access and how a particular person is granted access to a system, access reviews. So a lot of HR-related stuff. There is a lot of uh, time we spent on writing and fine-tuning the policies that we had. So for example, SOC2 requires you to have a data management policy, a cryptographic policy, and so on. So there's a bit of legal work involved in there as well. And of course, on the engineering side, making sure that you encrypt data at rest, you have proper monitoring and backups taking place. Uh, so it in touches like pretty much the entire company becoming mm. software compliant. And then when you, you think you're ready, like what's the process for actually becoming SOC 2 compliant? Yeah, so what we did is we chose Vanta, we saw where we stood and we started working on fixing some of those things. And then we started talking to an auditor who uh, and when we are looking out for an auditor, we are mainly looking for how many audits they have done before. Do they have experience with uh, dev tools that are a modern SaaS company? And once we were ready, you usually go through something called a scoping exercise with the auditors, where you sort of define what systems are in scope, what's left to be done. And for the type one audit, we essentially decide what date we want the audit to take place. 
So if we decide, say, 17th of August is when the audit is going to take place, at that point in time, the Type 1 audit evaluates if Superbase is SOC 2 compliant or not. Yeah, nice. And then if people want to see the SOC 2 report itself, how how would they get hold of that? Yeah, so I, there is an enterprise contact form at superbase.com slash contact slash enterprise, or you can just email growth at superbase.com and uh, yeah, you can get access to our SOC 2 report through that. Yeah, nice. And if any of our, our users or uh, companies like us wanted to become SOC 2 compliant, like, have you got any tips or advice for, for those companies? My main, uh, you know, uh, thing that I would do differently is, yeah, just start engaging with your auditor as soon as possible, figuring out which systems are in scope. And the other key thing also, as we discussed before, SOC 2 touches pretty much every part of the company's processes. So you sort of need to have buy-in from, like, say, HR, legal, growth, and engineering, of course. Uh, to make it a successful journey. So one more thing that comes to my mind is like, we actually spent quite a lot of effort in making sure that we didn't do things just because for, it's required for SOC 2. Like we tried to make the SOC 2 process work for us and we tried to codify what we already did in terms of security and uh, privacy of our customers' data instead of adding a bunch of processes which didn't map to any uh, direct impact in making our risk tolerance better, making our security better. So uh, it wasn't just a check the box exercise for us. And that's another reason why you need to work closely with your auditor to show, hey, even though you may not do exactly this thing the auditor wants you to do, you're doing these other three things that map to the same controls and make the security of the company better. And what's next on the compliance roadmap for Superbase? We'll definitely be doing the type two compliance. So we are going to start, we are already started working on the type two compliance for SOC 2 and probably look at HIPAA compliance right after that. That's great. So if you want to learn more about uh, SOC 2 or any of the other security initiatives we have going on at Superbase, we've also just launched a new security page on the website. Just go to superbase.com slash security. Okay, the next thing that we wanted to talk about is the DPA. Rose, what is a DPA? Uh, a DPA stands for Data Processing Agreement. A lot of our users ask us for this because they themselves want to be GDPR compliant. So they need um, a data processing agreement with Superbase in order to tick that box. Up to now, it's predominantly um, meant that we've had to act like a bit of a gatekeeper and people have had to email us and request it. Um, but with the launch of the new security page, we're going to put the DPA on there. Um, and this will mean that for folks, it will be more self-serve. So they can just come to the website, download the DPA, sign it, and then email it back over to us. And that means it's executed. Um, part of the reason that we ask folks to email it back is if we make any changes to the DPA in future, we know um, who you are and we can reach back out to you and, and send you the latest version. And the DPA is now available on our new security page as well at superbase.com slash security. And the last acronym I'm going to ask you about, Rose, is an SLA. What is an SLA? Yeah, an SLA is a service level agreement. Um, and this is something, again, that folks with more commercial and enterprise grade use cases will consistently ask us about. Um, so we have service level agreements for both uptime and so, uh, support target response times. These are actually in our docs. So you can head over to the docs page and just look for the SLA. It's in there. Um, if you want to have more of a conversation around this in terms of what this means for support, just reach out to us through the enterprise page. We've really been ramping up on a lot of things related to customer success. We're finding that when folks are asking for more support, they don't just mean, you know, they want the tickets answering faster. They want some kind of implementation roadmap, maybe a code review. They want a discussion around how is and um, how can they get the best out of Superbase. And we have customer success folks who are engineers, who are experts in Superbase that can help you plan out your journey in terms of implementation and get on the road to production. One other thing that we get asked for a lot is improved permissions in the dashboard so more granular control over who can access what right 
Uh, Indian, I don't know whether you want to talk about the new different roles that are available on the Superbase dashboard. Yep. So uh, we are launching uh, our access control with three roles. It's developer, owner, and admin. And we are planning to add more roles down the line, like billing admin and so on. But those are the three main roles that we are launching with. And why is it important? It's the principle of least privilege, right? You only want to give access to folks with just the permissions that they need. And you're sort of containing the blast radius if in case something does get uh, does go wrong. So, for example, if an API key of a billing admin goes wrong, hopefully they can just change something related to your billing, but not you know bring down your database. So it just boils down to limiting the blast radius in case something goes wrong. And last launch week and launch week four, we talked about the introduction of point in time recovery for enterprise users. Is there any updates on that for launch week five? Uh, yeah, actually there is. So we've been testing point in time recovery with um, some beta testers and some early enterprise adopters. But we've decided that we're going to roll this out and make it available in the pro tier, which again fits with this enterprise features for everyone narrative that we um, are quite passionate about. So you should see point in time recovery available in your dashboard soon. You'll be able to test it out as a pro tier user and get some rollback. And then we'll be releasing pricing if you want to roll back further in the coming weeks. And one huge product announcement that we're also making today is the introduction of Superbase Vault. So maybe Inian, you want to talk about what that is? Yeah, Superbase Vault is our take on secrets management. So we found that when you're writing a Postgres function or you just want to store a secret in your database, we, there wasn't a very good answer of how to do that. And now with Superbase Vault, you can store arbitrary text and even in the future, byte uh, data as secrets in your database so that even when your database is, say, dumped by uh, an attacker or a database dump gets leaked onto the internet, the secrets itself aren't revealed. You need to have access to the master key to decrypt your secrets. So this is like a great way of ensuring uh, that your data is encrypted, addressed, and also within your database. Awesome. Rose, if people want to get in touch about what's on offer on the Superbase Enterprise Plan, where can they go? Yeah, a couple of places. You can head over to the pricing page um, and hit the contact us button under the uh, Enterprise Pricing Card. You can also email growth at superbase.com or I'm pretty sure you can email enterprise at superbase.com as well. And that's it for Superbase Enterprise Day, day three of launch week five. If you want to find out what else has been being dropped during launch week, head over to superbase.com slash launch dash week to see everything that's dropped this launch week, last launch week, the launch week before, all that information is there. Uh, and we're looking forward to tomorrow and the day after as well because we've got a ton more stuff to drop and we also have a hackathon running all throughout this week if you want to get involved head to our blog and look for the hackathon rules or just drop into our discord you'll probably find some of the team hacking on their own projects in there um and you can win fifteen hundred dollars in github sponsorships and also some awesome swag so definitely great excuses to get involved and, and build something cool Thanks again for joining us for another awesome day of Superbase Launch Week number five. To make sure you don't miss any of the exciting things coming this week, double check your subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash Superbase. Make sure you click that little notification bell to hear about all of the other awesome stuff we're doing. Also, give us a follow at twitter.com slash Superbase. We'll be updating the superbase.com slash launch week page each day with helpful links to get started. And if you're excited to try out these new features, why not build your dream project and submit it as part of the Superbase Hackathon happening right now? Check out the Superbase Hackathon blog linked in the description for more details and head on over to discord.superbase.com to join our community. A bunch of the team will be hanging out in the Hackathon channels throughout the week as we build out our own projects. If you don't know where to get started with your Superbase project, make sure you join us for a very special happy hour live stream this week, where we're going to build an entire app from scratch in two hours. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.